What happens when we encounter something that we think is real? We get closer, we realize this isn't real. It's in fact a sculpture. Confusion turns into awe. And the artist takes us somewhere else. in looking at realism with this show came out of seeing a lot of younger artists who were starting to be reinterested in this subject and thinking about ways that we could give that idea a context. It's been a way of working that hasn't really gone away and I was interested in that so I started thinking about ways that we could make an arc from the 60s to the present looking at artists who have come at this idea from a lot of different angles. People are going to come to the show and they're going to see things that appear to be very familiar with them, but there are slight tweaks in the way they are presented in the gallery. As a whole, it kind of covers a range of practices that have been very concerned with the idea of the spectacle and the real. These are artists who are making things with their hands. They're very deliberately going back to a studio practice that is slowed down, that is meticulous, that is about really noticing things within the realm of the everyday and then making them by hand. And that, to me, felt very radical. Yoshihiro Suda, for example, carving what looks like a weed out of cypress and then hand painting it. When we see them, they look real, so we think, is that a weed? And then we, the closer we look, we realize this is not only something that looks startlingly real, but this is sculpture. Trompe l'oeil is a French term meaning trick of the eye. And many artists in this exhibition have used it to dramatic effect, not only in painting, which is really where the technique had its origins, but also in sculpture. And it's the idea that a surface can be manipulated in a way that makes it look dimensional, makes it look real, and gives it a very deceptive quality. Taba Auerbach is making painting in almost a reverse way that appears to have a trompe l'oeil surface or a trick of the eye surface. It looks three-dimensional. It looks like folded fabric. She takes her canvas, folds it, crumples it up, manipulates it, and then sprays it with a hand sprayer. When the canvas is stretched again, the, the ghost image of what she was doing with that sprayer is left behind. And what we get is something that looks like a very illusionistic three-dimensional surface, when in fact this is a flat painting. These are artists that are very aware of the presence of the viewer in the gallery. The piece we have in the show by Ron Muick is very relevant to where the artist positions the viewer in relation to the work. The piece is a very petite sculpture of a little boy who's squat and he's looking into a mirror. And his inquisition or his kind of curiosity about his own image pulls the viewer in to look into the mirror themselves. And I think you switch from looking at the face of the boy and trying to figure out the kind of exactness of the representation to looking back at yourself and your own image and you maybe question your realness in relation to the sculpture's realness. Paul Sietzema is an artist based in Los Angeles who has for a number of years been very interested in the idea of remaking the real. He's interested in history and going back to different source material, but somehow transposing this idea to a new context. The work that we see in the exhibition is a self-portrait that Paul found online. He was surfing one day, found a picture of himself taken by another photographer, and thought that it might be an interesting piece to reclaim as his own. So what we see in the gallery is a meticulously hand-drawn reproduction of what Paul saw on the computer screen. We see every pixel, we see the light from the screen reflecting off the edges of the picture. Something about it is very familiar, but then we see that this is not a photograph as we normally encounter a photograph. This is a photograph that has been mediated through the internet. One thing that's interesting about the works in Lifelike is that these are artists using, by and large, fairly traditional techniques. They're using painting, they're using sculpture, and they're also going towards some of the familiar genres that one finds throughout the history of art. Still life, 
portraits, landscapes. In that sense, the work really does have to us, the viewer, a sense of familiarity, which instantly allows these artists to play a bit more with ideas of the uncanny, which is where the familiar somehow looks strange to us. Something's a little off. Something is just making us a little uncomfortable or un it's looking unfamiliar to us. And that is where this element of play comes in, where a lot of artists are, are subverting the familiar in some way to confuse us, to pique our interest, to make us curious, to make us look a little closer.